would like to learn to use a metal lathe? This video will prepare you for your induction to our Warco lathe. In this video we will cover the terminology and basic concepts of turning, what each piece of the lathe does, and this way we'll have you ready for your practical part of induction in next to no time. Before we start, it's important to understand that this induction is about making you a safe user of the lathe so that you can competently use the lathe without the risk of damaging the lathe or injuring yourself. Whilst on the subject of safety, the lathe is potentially one of the most dangerous machines in the Makespace workshop, and also one of the safest. The difference is you. If you have an accident while using the lathe, the chances are it was your fault. Lathes have been around for hundreds of years and have been made very safe over time. And understand that you need to learn, develop and follow good and safe practices right from the beginning. So let's get going. Firstly, the major parts of the lathe. This is called the headstock and this end is called the tailstock. In the centre is the carriage which travels from left to right and runs on the bed. The headstock holds the gearbox that drives the chuck which holds the work you're working on. The screw of levers here will select the speed that you run at. There are four gears and two ratios giving a total of eight speeds. Below the main gearbox is the secondary gearbox and that is used for cutting threads and using power feeding. At the top of the lathe is a small electrical control box which has a power light, a coolant control light, a jog switch and an emergency stop button. Over the chuck is a yellow cover. This cover does two things, one of which stops particles being flung off the work and the lathe onto you. The cover also has a switch on it so that if you raise it while working it stops the lathe. Always make sure, develop a good habit and make sure you have lifted the cover before you put your hands into the lathe. The carriage is moved left to right using a large wheel and when you want to move it quickly you use the toggle. For fine control you hold the wheel. The carriage allows us to cut along the round side of the work in what's called a long cut or a turn. The part of the lathe that straddles the bed is called the saddle and on the saddle is mounted the cross slide. Again with the cross slide you use the wheel for fine work and the toggle to move quickly. On the make space lathe we have another slide called the top or compound slide. It makes the lathe very very versatile and allows us to cut at acute angles. Mounted on the top of the compound slide is the quick release tool. This allows us to change cutting tools as we need them very quickly by simply dropping them and locking them. More on that later. The tailstock is used mainly for two things. One, drilling holes down the centre of your work and two, if you have a longer piece of work it's used to support the far end so that it can't move around while you're working. And now a closer look at the carriage. This lever here is the power drive lever. If you move it to the left and then pin up, and we always refer to the pin and not the handle, you engage the cross slide. Notice the little plate showing this. Moving the lever to the right and down engages the carriage drive. Using the power drive means you do not have to turn the wheels by hand whilst cutting. The lever has a centre position which puts it in safe mode, so that it cannot accidentally be knocked into drive make a habit of always putting it in the centre position whilst not in use. This is a thread cutting lever and is engaged by pushing it down and when not in use always make sure that it is in the up position. If it is not it locks out all the other controls. And finally the run stop lever. It's engaged by pulling it slightly to the right and then downwards to run the lathe forwards or upwards to run in reverse. To stop the lathe, simply put your finger under the lever and slide it upwards. Holding it in your hand may override the safety mechanism and throw the lathe into reverse whilst it is travelling forward. This will result in considerable damage. The very first check you need to make when you start to use the lathe is the oil levels in the three gearboxes. 
two in the headstock and the third under the carriage. So to set the speed that you will be turning, you first need to set the high or low ratio lever to the required position and then the speed selector. To determine which speed you need to use, you use the machine speed calculator chart behind the lathe. As the lathe has a crash gearbox, never change gears while the lathe is in motion, as this can cause major damage to the gearboxes. The lower gearbox sets all the specialized ratios for thread cutting and power drive. Your inductor will go through setting up this gearbox on your induction. The lower gearbox is engaged from the top gearbox via this lever here. In the forward direction that way and the reverse direction that way. We very rarely use the reverse direction at make space. The ratios for thread cutting are determined by using this table across the top and the ratios or speed for power driving is determined by this table down below. Always remember to wait until the lathe has come to a complete halt before attempting to change any gear ratios. And now onto the tailstock. As I mentioned before, it is mainly used for two functions. One is to hold a long piece of metal in the end so it does not wobble while you work. This is the bearing that is used to support the work. In the tailstock is the drill chuck. It is identical to a normal drill chuck with a taper which allows quick changing between the chuck and the bearing. However, a word of warning, as the taper is gripped tightly in the shaft we need a mechanism to eject it. To eject it we go back past the zero point on the gradical to here and it comes out. It is important to always remember that while you're turning and you have your chuck up by your work, never to reverse out past the zero point. Doing this will leave a loose chuck right up against your work and create a potentially dangerous situation. If you do things like this, you may find that your right to use the lathe is revoked. So when you wind the tailstock out, always go to zero and then lock it using this lever. Your inductor will demonstrate to this in detail. There are thousands of cutting tools available for a lathe. At MakeSpace we have a basic selection that cover most of our members' requirements. Members may bring in specialized tools when they require them. Whilst there are three main groups of cutting tools, MakeSpace mostly use the removable insert type as they do not require sharpening, which is a laborious job. In this photo, the two tools on the left are called boring tools. They are specialized and are used for cutting inside holes. We don't cover boring on this induction. The next three are variants of turning tools. Two are for turning and the third one is a chamfer tool allowing you to make 45 degree edges. The last three are a groove cutter, a parting off tool used to cut off your work when you have finished and the last one is a knurling tool which makes nice patterns on your work. The difference between a boring bar and a turning tool is mainly the profile of the tool holder. The reason for rounding the tool holder is boring is done inside a hole whilst turning is done on the outside. The boring bar needs to fit into a round hole. As we share the lathe, we never know who used it last and what condition they left it in. So before we start, we need to make some basic safety checks on the lathe. The chuck can spin at speeds up to 2000 RPM and if it comes loose at that speed it will have the force of a small cannonball. This means if it hits you in the chest the consequences will be dire. So let's start by checking the chuck is on correctly and tightened. Bearing in mind we have three different chucks that make space and members may well change between them. Firstly check that the registration marks are in alignment. Second check that the cam lock arrows are between the two extreme marks and now check that all three of the cam locks are tight using the large chuck key and this brings us to the first rule of lathes never allow your chuck to come loose mounting your stock in the chuck always use the safety chuck key the one with the spring on it 
to loosen or tighten the chuck. The spring ensures that the key cannot be left to the chuck as this is extremely dangerous as it can fly out with force if the lathe starts with the key in the chuck. Which now brings us to the second rule of lathes. Never leave your key in the chuck. Then ensure that the jaws are tight on the work, which is the cue for the third rule of lathes. Never let your work come loose. Let's look now at mounting the tool on the quick release post. We're going to use the trigon tool, which is the largest we have. It's roughly triangular in section and can be turned around three times as the tool becomes blunt. We place the assembly on the tool post and lock it. When you want to change it, you simply release the lock and lift this off. However, the first time you use each tool, you need to run through some checks. Firstly, check that the insert is tight in the tool holder and then the tool holder is tight in the quick release holder. Lastly, you need to check the height of the cutting tool. It must align to the widest part of the work. If it is too high, it will skate over your work, and if it's too low, it will undercut and tear at your work. Use the custom Make Space Made height tool to check and adjust. And when completed, make sure that you have tightened the locking nut uh, by hand. Never use a spanner. Your tool is now ready for cutting. This is the dead stop. When correctly set, it will prevent one of the most common accidents that happen on lathes. That is, putting the cutting tool into the chuck jaws, which when happens usually creates a mangled mess and a lot of upset engineers who have to repair it. During the induction, your inductor will explain in detail how the dead stop works and how to set up the lathe to prevent damage. The Make Space lathe is fitted with two coolant and lubricant systems. The flooding system that pours lots of liquid all over the job and yourself and removes massive amounts of heat very quickly and the atomizer that uses both high pressure air and water based oil to cool and lubricate. It has more finesse but less cooling power. Whichever system you use you need to ensure that you have sufficient coolant available for your job. Your inductor will explain how to measure out the oil and how to set up the sump and the lathe before cutting. Flooding is switched on on the control panel and the atomizer requires the compressor to be turned on before it can be used. On both the flooding and the atomizer there are stopcocks to adjust the amount of coolant. An idiosyncrasy of the lathe is that because the flooding pipe is mounted on the carriage it only tracks left and right along the axis of the bed. The atomizer is mounted on the cross slide and can track both left and right and across the cross slide. Time to look at two of the safety features of the lathe. Firstly, the chuck safety cover. The lathe will not start or run whilst it is not fully down. And if you lift the safety cover whilst the lathe is running, the lathe stops. An interlock means that it will not start until you have moved the stop run lever back to the stop position. This is the emergency foot brake. It is normally only used for emergencies. When you need to use it, stamp on it it will stop the lathe immediately. I'll now demonstrate it in action. The six absolute no-no's of machining. Number one, never let your chuck come loose. Always check it is on tight before you use it. Also check the rest of the lathe as you don't know how competent the previous user was and if they left the lathe safe for you to use. Number two, never start your lathe whilst your stock material is loose in the chuck. Always check. Number three, never leave your key in the chuck. Number four, never reverse the tailstock out past the zero mark. Number five, never allow your cutting tool to hit the chuck jaws. Always check your dead stop setting after adjusting any part of the lathe. And number six, never allow the carriage to hit the dead stop whilst cutting using the power drive. Keep your hand on the power drive lever and your eye on the dead stop gap. We're looking forward to meeting you and completing the practical part of your induction. So 
please go to the website and do the theory tests for both the lathe and the Makespace safety test and see you soon.